guys, today we are going to see the basics about MATLAB. We are going to see creation of variables inside the MATLAB workspace, creating plots of signals, and finding values inside of vectors. The workspace is divided in three main areas, the current folder, the command window, and the workspace. To create a variable, for instance, a variable called a, you just type a equals some value. MATLAB has a rich set of functions, for instance, in the next command I'm going to call the cosine function just to calculate some cosine values from some variable C. In the workspace we can, for instance, select some variables that we would like to delete. And uh, another nice tip is that if you use the arrows of your keyboard you can repeat the commands that has already been typed. Now we are going to create a vector, a 1D vector with some values. So in order to create vectors, you just put some values separated by space with brackets. Another important point to remember in MATLAB is that all vectors indexes start at 1, different than C or C++ that start at 0. Another topic that we are going to see later is that, for instance, if you now if you try to access an index that is outside the bounds of the vector, you are going to automatically get an error. Now we create a 2D vector where we still use the spaces to separate columns and dot comma to separate rows. The way that you access different elements inside a 2D matrix is with the row address and the column address in exactly this order. For instance, if you want to, create, to access the middle element of this matrix, you just type uh, mate 2 d for instance, second row and second column. Later on, we just show a little bit on how to do some operations inside of matrix, for instance, to add 10 to every element of the 2D array, and uh, for instance, to transpose the, the matrix, to multiply the matrix to of certain values, etc. Now we're going to see also how to concatenate matrix. For instance, you can append one matrix below the other, or one matrix uh, aside of the other. The only point that you need to remember is that uh, you cannot, for instance, uh, append matrix with different, uh, different dimensions. Here we are also going to learn how to extract parts of the matrix, for instance all these bottom columns, this bottom line of this matrix, we can extract them easily. Uh, we can also, for instance, select a set of rows inside a, from a column to the, to the, in the matrix. It's just a matter to use the two dots operator. For instance, now we want all the third column. To finalize this basic part, we can use the command who's, who is going to list the data type and all the variables that you have now in the workspace. As every introductory language tutorial, 
we are just defining some string to do some kind of hello world with fprintf of bisp. Uh, well, fprintf basically it works exactly like C. You just have a string, then you use space percent D to add a character or percent S to add a string. Now we are also going to show how to use some functions. For instance, now we're going to get the maximum value that we can find inside this vector. Uh, we can use the min functions to get the minimum value. And also you can use the find function to find a particular value inside the inside a vector. Before seeing the find function, we use the we show how to use the equal equal operator that basically is going to check if uh, if any element inside your vector is equal to some particular value. For instance, now we want to find for uh, where in the vector you have a value 5. If you want to count the number of times that a particular value, value repeats in the vector, you can use the numel function as well, in conjunction with find. Now, before we see how we plot signals, we're going to show how to create vectors with a uh, a kind of sequence. For instance, now we are creating a vector from 0 to 2 multiplied by p in steps of p divided by 100. Now, just to illustrate, we use the sin function in the x vector created and we plot the signal. Now, just to improve a little bit the appearance of the plot, we're going to add a title and maybe some legend and stuff like that. Another nice comment that you're going to see uh, right away is how to hold the hold plots to merge uh, more than one plot in the same window. You see, if you use hold on, it's going to retain all the graphics that you renderize it right now. And then we can call subsequent calls to plot and we're going to just put the plot one over the other. Now, instead of adding one plot over the other, there is a nice function called subplot that allows you to create a kind of uh, matrix of plots in the same way. For instance, you can have one plot showing a sin function, another plot with the cosine function, and you are going to be able to see them side by side in a kind of matrix organization.
well now just to finalize we add the second plot and then we add we can see the cosine function side by side so guys for this first introductory video just to review you see how to create plots how to create vectors and how to address certain elements to transpose a vector so we're quite done for an introductory video and uh, hope to see you soon in the next one